All right, so what is noise exactly? We're gonna go ahead and take a look here in this base ref networks. And we're then gonna dig in here to this base intro to RAND. Now, feel free to follow along with what we're doing here. You can make all these operators yourself. Or if you so choose, you can just kind of listen along to what's going on here. Uh, either option is fine with me. Uh, you're gonna get hopefully the same amount of it uh, either way. So what is noise? Now, at its root, um, noise, is just a function and we know there are some kind of built-in functions here for us here in touch so for example if you've ever used tdu.rand that's a random function that's built in for us uh, right here inside of touch designer and it gives us a random value between 0 and 1 and the way that works is that when we call this function we have to give it a seed value now the importance of the seed value and the reason that I bring this up is that noise is at its heart just a mathematic function Right? It is, at the end of the day, all we're really looking at are uh, a normalized value that's being returned to us that's derived from the seed value that we put into it. And one of the best ways we can demonstrate how uh, that exists and why that's important to think about is if we look at this particular kind of like simple little example. I'm going to pause it here so it stops kind of cranking away. So the first uh, expression that I've written here is tdu.rand, TDU right? So I'm going to use this random function, and I'm going to feed it with uh, the frame, right? So in this case, me.time.frame. I'm going to use modus at 60, so we're just going to repeat that number uh, every 60 frames. And we can see down here if we took a look at that, right? That's what we're going to do here in the second expression. Now I'm going to trail those two values. So on the top, we're seeing a random value that's generated. And on the bottom, we're seeing the seed value that we're putting into that function. Um, so this way we can kind of compare, right? Ideally, what we're after here is comparing the return value of the function with the seed value of the function. Now the reason that's important and the reason that we care about that is it's going to help us kind of suss out some of the details here of what's going on. That's especially important because at some point here we're going to start to look at much larger arrays of numbers. We're going to start to branch out into huge value or huge numbers of values and if we can kind of really get a good handle on what exactly is happening here first, it's going to be really useful for us when we go to unpack some of this stuff. All right, so Again, the first uh, channel here is our random number, or what I'm calling our pseudo-random number, because it's not actually completely random. And then the value underneath is the seed value that we're putting into that function. Okay, so, you know, great, wonderful. We can see here that we repeat values. That's, that's nice, right? We can see that we're going to count uh, down here from uh, 0 to 60, right? Okay. And then we're also going to get a random value here. I'm going to convert that into a DAT so we can actually compare it a little bit. And the next exciting thing here, right, we're going to do like a little bit of reordering to make sure that this is uh, stacked in the opposite index order, right? So it's frame count and then the, the random value that we're getting. And then after that, what I want to do is I'm going to use the select just pull out only a particular set of values. So in this case, I'm only looking at the seed value of 21. So why does that matter? What, why do I care? Well, I care because we'll see that the return value, right, what I'm getting out of my random function is the same regardless, or is the same as long as it has the same seed. If I give the function the same seed, I'm going to get the same number. And we could even see Right? If we turn this back on and we drop down and eval that, feel free to play along here at home. And we use the expression tdu ran, and we give it the value 21. We're going to get, sure enough, 243.243308, right? And it goes on a little bit longer here. Okay, that's really great. That is wonderful. Um, and, and to really understand why that's powerful and why that's really useful, um, it's important to consider that 
while random numbers often are random uh, or well noise I should say uh, feels like it might be random in nature the fact that it's derived from a mathematic function means that we can use it and exploit it in some really interesting ways and the reason I bring that up is if we go up a layer on our network and then take a look at this thing seeds we'll see here that uh, we have a few different things that we're kind of pulling apart here all right so I've got a constant right here's my zero value and what I'm going to do is we can see in all of these, right? I'm going to go ahead and open these up just a little bit more. There we go. In this case, all three of these noise chops are fed with the same seed. And being fed with the same seed, they return all the same values, right? Okay, so our noise, our second column of noise chops has a similar uh, kind of setup, right? So they're seeded with the same value and they're transformed with the same value. They're both transformed with abs dot seconds, abs time dot seconds. And again, the reason this becomes really powerful and useful to know is that when you've got a big distributed network, right? Let's say that you're doing something where you've got, I don't know, 10 or 15 or 100 machines that have to run your network that are spread out, you know, hither and thither. Knowing that as long as your chops, tops, sops, are fed with the same seed value and with the same transformation in terms of time, we're going to see the same numbers come out of them. That's really incredibly useful and powerful. We could take a look here, right? We can see that if we seed these with slightly different values, in this case, plus one, plus two, plus three, these noise chops, right, with all the other parameters the same, are different because their seed value is different. Now this holds true also with tops, right? We can see the same behavior here in tops. In this case, this is a similar setup where our translate value is changing over time, but our seed value is all the same here in this middle column. And in our end column, this is where our seed value is different across all of our tops. We can also see the same thing happen here with SOPs, right? The same exact principles hold where as long as you have the same seed value and the same transform over time value, your SOPs are going to behave the same way. Now, it might feel like we're belaboring that point a little bit, but the important thing to kind of wrestle with and hold on to here in all of this is that noise, right? The thing that we kind of imagine as being a completely random event is actually shaped by mathematics. And what we can do is we can exploit some of those properties to make sure that we've got nice uniformity across a bunch of distributed machines. We can make sure that we've got uniformity across networks. We've got all sorts of ways that we might take advantage of that and use that in ways that are going to be really valuable and powerful for us. So that's a little bit to kind of construct uh, construct what's going on here and contextualize how noise works at its kind of most fundamental level. And what we're going to do next is we're going to look at how we might use some of that in practice. So we're going to back out of our network here. We're going to come back to this ref network here at one point. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dive into session one and we're going to start here.